With us today on Car Clinic is Rich Christensen, host of Pink's All Out and creator of the Pink's brand. Rich, a big welcome to Bobby Likas Car Clinic. Glad to have you in the house today. Oh, Bobby, it's my pleasure. I'm really glad that we're doing this. A unique individual, of course. I've seen you on speed television, as have many people, but a unique idea. How does a niche television program focused on drag racing's weekend warriors end up changing the overall sport as it's presented to the public? How does that work? Well, first, you got to move your life to Los Angeles from Iowa and give your heart and soul to that energy-sucking city for about 15 years with 250 rejections. I was a radio TV major. I went to the city and literally paid my dues, got hammered by that city for about 15 years until someone finally said yes. That yes was pink. It was the first show I sold. My wife and I had, uh, literally had moved 15 times in 13 years. But when that yes came... That's when I buckled down and I went at that opportunity like you can't believe. Then, Bobby, then I put the work in to take that brand and get it known internationally. Let's shift gears, no pun intended here, but, you know, you've compared your racers to artists. How do you see that? What's your vision there? Well, understand that I know nothing about how a car works. I can barely open the hood of a car, and that's for real. And the first time I was ever on a track was Pink's. What I found was interesting was the people putting those cars together. In my mind, to to this day, I just don't get how you can take the same parts that everybody else uses, put them in a vehicle in a certain way that you can put that much horsepower to the concrete or asphalt and get it down a track that quickly. So I saw them as artists, mechanical geniuses, artists, and how they maneuver those cars. There's almost a dance to it and almost how they know their vehicles, almost like a relationship. So I see it as art. I really do. It's, it's almost beautiful to me to see a good burnout, a good launch, staying in the groove, and then going all the way through the finish line. It's almost beautiful to me. Does that yeah. make sense? I know exactly where you're coming from, and I think that you bring a fresh and and certainly you've brought a fresh approach. But from what I see in the background that I have, and I am a car guy and have built race cars and just fortunate to have migrated into in television and, and radio, but I'll share this with you. Your perspective and calling your participants artists is right on the money because we all do take individual components and parts, and we may use the same alphabet, but we come up with a totally different soup. Let's shift gears. You recently held a press conference in Charlotte. We're talking about Earth Day here. With all the changes afoot in the sport, how do you see biofuels, hybrid power, battery power uh, as the future of the sport? What's your take on alternative fuels, and where do you see that in our future? I'll say this, Bobby, that if you're a performance shop and you don't have a strategy for biofuels and hybrid technologies and electric technologies, I think you're going to be left behind. Bob, you know this. You know how fast those electric vehicles can be. Unbelievable, yes. So if you're looking for a challenge as a driver and a, you know, a machinist to, and a mechanic to get that car down the track, if you're not looking at electric, you're insane. Less moving parts, instant power. I mean, that's what I'm going to tell you. Is If you're not preparing for that, then give the business to the retail performance shop next door or to the mechanic next door. That's how I feel about it. You know, all the schools are starting to gear up for that. The UTI and the machinist schools, they're all starting to gear up. We have an initiative from the president of our country to start looking in that direction. It's good for the environment. I, in honor of Earth Day and Earth Week, Bobby, I drove my hybrid 18 hours to get from Texas to Charlotte to do the show last weekend and 18 hours back home wow. because I just wanted to use my hybrid vehicle and kind of do my thing, got to take my wife, my dog, and I literally canceled my plane flight to do that. So I believe it's the future. And by the way, it's the perfect environment on that drag strip to kind of make hybrid and electric and bio and I think someday hydrogen technology really kind of cool, kind of relevant to show that it's fast. I mean, I think there's this misconception that hybrid is slow. I think you know better than that, and I think I, I do as well. And if we go to the track and start proving it and getting more cars out there doing it, I think it could be phenomenal. Are we talking tomorrow? Probably not. Are we talking two, five, eight years from now? Absolutely. Guaranteed. Rich, you're right, you're right on the money. And folks, what a great time this is. We're talking with Rich Christensen, who founded Pink's All Out and also the creator of the Pink's brand. Rich, just a couple more questions. In your experience, at first, you said, you know, you're a stranger to cars. You don't know how cars work. But certainly, from your marketing standpoint, you're going to and have the opportunity with alternative fuels and battery powered to bring it to the next level. And the next level for me would be for the average American, the lawyer, the doctor, the soccer moms to understand drag racing and what the benefits are and how people get so excited about it. 
We're taking that average, that lawyer, that doctor, that average person, the weekend racer, and they're coming out. See, what people understand about Panks a lot of times is that it's not the professional that has sponsors behind them and hundreds of thousands of dollars in the best. These are the weekend thrashers, wrenchers mm-hmm. that go out there and work on their cars. It's truly your neighbor and your friend. What I do at the show, Bobby, is that if my wife or my mother come to Dragster for the first time, I want them to leave having a true understanding of what they're watching. I don't take for granted that they don't know what a tree is, what a, what a burnout is, <laughs> what a launch is. I don't take for granted that they don't know what the scrubber is when there's an oil down. I entertain, I educate, I talk to the crowd the whole time. So if I can put on a great show and give them a great experience, maybe they'll come back, they'll help the track, stay around because they'll back come back and give their business, they'll watch us on TV and keep uh, the show going. Only good things happen, Bobby. If I can go out there and put on a fantastic show, connect with the spectator that's there, number one, hopefully that will translate to the viewer, number two, and number three, put on a fair and great competition for those racers. My priority is that you literally know what's happening every second in a language that you can understand if you're coming to the track for the first time. That's how. I, that's my goal, to make it grow. And if I can do my job, Bobby, maybe we'll continue to get more viewers, more spectators, more sponsors, and more racers, and, and more importantly, keep tracks open for the future. Oh, I, I agree with you. I, I agree with everything you said. Uh, one, one last question. Uh, Pinks, P-I-N-K-S. Give us the origin of Pinks. Uh, I'm Pretty sure I'm, I know what where it came from, but tell our well, audience here. Uh, oh, pink slip, the owner yep. slip. I'll race, yep. you for the, I'll race you for the car. I started doing the research on it. You're absolutely right. What happened back in the day was two guys, a guy from Floyd <laughs> County and a guy from uh, Chickasaw County would get together, and they'd say, let's race for Panks. But what I found out was this. It was all kind of a, a lot of it was a big scam. Really, they were racing for a case of beer. So what I did is with Panks, lose the race, lose the ride. I made it real. It was a 1,000% real. You were racing for titles. You win that car. You put it on your tr- truck, and you haul it away, and you just lost and we lost vehicles that were up to over $50,000 that guys won fairly on pinks, lose the race, lose your ride, and took it home. And that was it. So I just took a what I thought I think was a little bit of folklore and myth of racing for titles, and I made it real. And it did. For a while there, it was kind of the Everest challenge of drag racing, it was racing for titles for real. Folks, we're talking with Rich Christensen, and uh, he's a gentleman that sort of keeps the peace, and yet you stir up the war. So how do you, do, how do you wear both hats? Well, when, when we were right now, we're focusing on pinks all out. So it's been a couple of years since we actually shot an original pinks, lose the race, lose your ride. But when I was doing it, I'll tell you this, Bobby, that what you saw on television was a 30-second clip of a 20-minute <laughs> negotiation. And uh, most of the time, if I couldn't get those two racers to move, if there was one racer that was not budging, I'd just say, okay, you just talked yourself into a loss. It's a first-to-four competition. You're down two. You were down one. Without going down the track, now you're down two. And I just kept putting that heat on it until if both of them would move, I'd say, fine, I'll keep the car. And, Bobby, I would have zero of a problem taking those cars, putting them on eBay, and sticking that money in my pocket <laughs> if, if, because they made a deal. And I had experts around me to say, that's a fair ask. If a guy says, well, give me a half a track length, that was never fair. So I had guys around me that could help support fair racing. And I'll tell you this, Bobby, final thing I'll tell you is this. If those racers would have quit lying to me and just told me the truth of what they had, I could have had those, every one of those racers races within inches. It all had been on who got the best arm drop off of me. But when it just became guys lying about not having nitrous and hiding it in places, Bobby, that they talk about artists and genius and, and, and con man. I mean, that's what the show became, who could lie the most. And that became an unfun show for me to do, so I didn't want to do it anymore. Swiss racers would have quit scamming each other and told the truth. Okay, give us a 30,000-foot view of what you're doing today, Rich. What I'm doing today is the uh, Pink's All Out is an offshoot of Lose the Race, Lose Your Ride. It is an anti-sandbagging show. We invite 500 racers. In a 14-hour period, 500 racers will make 1,000 passes, and I'll have 14 hours to give $10,000 to one ultimate champion. 500 will be whittled down to 32. 32 will become 16. 16 will become 8, then 4, then 2, and I'll do a hot lap, best 2 out of 3 for the two finalists, all in the span of 14 hours. It's one of the most incredible drag racing shows in the world. 
I want to thank you for taking the time and to join us today. It's, uh, you and I could talk for hours. Uh, uh, maybe maybe we can get you in Carthenic Studios one day, and then we can take calls from across the nation. Other than the fact that you wouldn't give up, and you have 200 trials and uh, more no's than, than finally got a yes on your program, it was the integrity and the drive and the passion for what you're doing that's more obvious to me now than even seeing you on television, and I thank you for your time to join us on Car Clinic. Uh, Bobby, it was a true pleasure. I really thank you for having me on.